Welcome to the Pirate Handyman, where we show you how you can do things to save coin for your own treasure chest. This is stuff that you can do, just common sense, you don't have to be a professional. If you kind of dig what we're doing, hit that subscribe button down below, uh, give us a like, and if you have any questions uh, or even suggestions, put them in the comments below. So today we're going to be talking about air conditioners and what you can do to help lengthen the life of your air conditioner, help it run more efficiently, and you know, even save you some money on your electricity bill. Now, when it comes to pretty much any type of appliance, but especially with the air conditioner, dirt is not your friend. As a matter of fact, you're hearing this here first. Dirt is dirty. <coughs> what it actually does, um, in this case, it's going to restrict the airflow and cause the unit to have to work harder in order to keep the house cool. So that's why there are filters and there's several different types of filters. We're going to talk about a couple of them today, but we're going to show you how to keep the air moving and keep it moving more efficiently, which not only is going to save you money, but it's also going to save wear and tear on the unit itself. So in this case, what we have is an air filter that is in the ceiling as part of the return air plenum. Now we're going to replace it with another filter. You'll see that uh, pretty much any type of filter you buy is going to have an arrow that tells you which way the airflow is supposed to go. Now this happens to be a very inexpensive filter. Uh, costs a couple of bucks. Uh, used to be able to get them for 99 cents. You can spend all the way up to $15 to $25 for the filters. You need to research them a little bit to decide what's best for your situation. Uh, there's hypoallergenic type uh, of filters. There's some that uh, are not quite as uh, cheap, I guess you could say. But just research them a little bit and see what's going to work best for you. You should replace your filters every 30 days, no matter what type that you have, because they're going to get gummed up with the dust and they're going to cause your unit to have to work harder. Now, in this particular thermostat, there is a feature that it tells me every 30 days it'll say replace filter problem is I don't look at this all the time so I will set an alarm I actually write it on a manual calendar that every 30 days it's time to replace the filter so let's go up there now the first thing that we want to do is we want to clean off the vent so <clears throat> we're just going to take a duster and we're going to go up here and we're going to clean clean the grate off we want to get as much of this dust off of here as we can and then once we get that cleaned off, in this case, there's just two little tabs here that we're going to turn and it's going to drop the old filter out. So we'll set this down. Now I like to go ahead and just clean all the way around here and get as much of the old dust off as possible. And once we do that, we're going to take our new filter, make sure the airflow is correct, make sure that the, uh, the arrow is pointing in the way the air is going. Since this is a return air plenum, it's going to be pulling the air up that way, so my arrow is going to point up. And I just put this up here like this. And that's it. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to show you what it's like to change a filter on an inline plenum. An inline plenum is where the filter is going to actually slide in to the plenum because it's in all one contained unit, usually in a closet. Uh, it can be out in the garage, as opposed to just uh, <coughs> putting it in a, in a ceiling unit like this. And once we do that, we're going to come back and we're going to show you one more thing you can do that's actually going to make it run more efficiently. All right, everybody, I am the Pirate Handyman son-in-law, and we are here at my house real quick. Uh, we're in my garage, and this is our air conditioning unit. So he said that we we're going to show you a different type of unit because his has the filter that goes kind of in the ceiling, and this is a fully self-contained air conditioning unit. So we're in the garage, and you can see that it's all here in a closet. Now, this might be something that you have, especially if you're in an apartment. Uh, you might 
this might be the type of air conditioning unit that you have. And so in mine, the filter goes below, but sometimes the filter comes in the side. And the thing you wanna remember is the airflow is always getting sucked in from the house. So right over here is our house. So my airflow is coming in like this and going up, okay? So it's very, very simple. All you do is you find wherever your door is, open up your little door, and then you can pull out your, pull out your filter so you can change it. Okay, and then here's the filter right here. Now, what you wanna look for is, you wanna look for, see the little arrow right there? There's a little arrow. You always want that arrow facing the direction the air is going. So in this situation, the air is coming in from the house, okay, and going up like that. So I want my arrow facing up. So to change it, I mean, you just put your new filter, all right, got it in there, arrow facing up, Boom, close, and that's done. Now, if you have one where it's on the side, then it's the same concept, okay? But that's just the other type of air conditioning unit that you might run into uh, that's just a little bit different than the one that he was showing you. All right, so we've changed the filters inside, but one there's still one more thing to do to help your air conditioner. Now, as we talked about, dirt's the enemy. And as you can see on the uh, outside compressor unit, You've got fins, and this is where it is pulling air in, and it's pushing it out the top here with this big fan. It's, it's just creating a convection cooling for the compressor unit itself. So the first thing we want to do is turn it off. Now, in this case, I happen to have a breaker outside. If you don't have an outside breaker next to the unit itself, then you'll have to go to the circuit breaker panel inside. So we turn it off. Now we're just going to take our hose, wait for the fan to shut down. We're going to turn the hose on and we're just going to spray out so we can get all of the, uh, the gunk that is up against the, uh, the inside of it and push it out. We don't want to do it from outside because it's just going to push the stuff uh, into the mesh that is surrounding this and it's just going to gunk it up further. And you can see the stuff that's coming out. And again, the reason for doing this is it makes the unit operate more efficiently, so it's going to save you money. It's going to save you a coin in your treasure chest as far as your energy costs go. And also it's going to make it last longer because if the unit doesn't have to work as hard, then it's just going to last longer. So unlike your, your breaker switch that you have on a breaker panel, which is a switch that comes on and off, this is just a pull-out switch. And it, what it does is it just breaks the connection. So we, we pulled it out. Now we can put it back in and just make sure it's in there the way it, uh, tight as it can get. And you can hear the unit coming back on. Now thanks for joining us here on the Pirate Handyman. If you kind of dig what we're doing, hit that subscribe button down below. Give us a like and give us some suggestions if there's some other things that you'd like to see. Here's the smooth sailing.